How's it going, YouTube? Welcome to Junior and the Big Dog, your favorite father and son duo covering Miami Hurricanes football and sports. As promised, finally, here we are with our video breakdowns. First up, the Eric King. But before we get to it, what's up, Big Dog? What do you say? I, uh, it, it's uh, with all the stuff going on <laughs> in the world, I guess, uh, with the computer and, and then the issue, obviously, with, with you having the babies and and uh, a, a much uh, bigger <laughs> portion of your time is taken up there at the home. And, and uh, but it's a, a great thing to be have, have your time taken up that way. Absolutely. Um, and but now and we got the computers all set up. So we can start putting out more content um, and start putting out the content like we we were before uh, more frequently, and uh, and doing the video breakdowns that we love to do. So I'm I'm ready to roll. Yes, sir. So the Eric Kings, uh, first up, he is probably I mean not taking away anything from anybody else in his class or any, not taking away anything else from any uh, any of the other transfers, but. I think Kane's fans are most excited about De'Ara King, frankly. Um, so with good reason. With good reason, absolutely. <laughs> as we will see, and you know, because we're going to show the clips and whatnot of what De'Ara King could bring to the Miami Hurricanes. So we figured, why not um, to get started with De'Ara King? We basically left off uh, the 2020 recruiting class. We covered the majority of it, um, leaving out about six. We got De'Ara King, uh, Roche, Keyshawn Smith, Isaiah Dunson, Jalen Harrell. And I'm missing one, big dog. Uh, you said Dunstan, Harold, Teacher Smith, oh, which is the one you're missing? Oh, uh, Dazzling Worsham. Thank you. And Dazzling. And we got to do a video on Dazzling as well. Yep. So when we were debating which one to do first, we figured, come on, man. Everybody wants to see a breakdown. How Junior the big dog do it. You know how we know you guys love how we do it of D.A. King, man. So let's go ahead and get started, man. You want to go ahead and, and Absolutely. Go we, what we want to say first thing, his, please. His, oh, yeah. Go ahead. Please always hit the like button. It really does help us with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're new to us, please subscribe, hit the notifications bell, and press all so you'll be notified whenever we release a new video. And always leave com comments because we love interacting and we try to always respond to 100% of the comments that we receive. And, and uh, I'm going to be catching up with those as we speak. And hopefully by our Wednesday live chat, we always have a, a live chat every Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, and, and then obviously... A, a, you know, sorted videos here and there throughout. So uh, please hit the like button and all those other good things. Absolutely. All right. You want to start off with, uh, with King? Yeah, give, man. Give us some, some background on him. Yeah. Um, so he was born August 24th, 1997. He's 22 years old. He's from Manville, Texas, man. He's 5'11", 190. He attended uh, Manville High School and he began his sophomore year as the eighth string, eighth eighth string quarterback claiming the starting spot a few weeks after the first game uh during his senior season he broke the career texas six six eight passing touchdowns record of 117 set by none other than kyler murray the year before during his high school career, he passed for over 10,000 yards and rushed for over 3,000, thro throwing for 140 touchdowns and rushing for 48. He originally committed to Texas Christian University, TCU, to play college football, but then changed to the University of Houston. Um, you you want to break down what he did at Houston, Big Dog? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The, and, and the big thing is with, with that is not only did he set, did he break the uh, Texas 6A record, uh, he destroyed it. Because <laughs> you said Kyler Murray had 117. He had 140, the Eric King. Yeah. Um, and rushed for 48 touchdowns or more. I mean, it's that's a, an amazing thing. And one of the things, you know, when you see when you see De'Ara King run the ball, you say to yourself, that's a running back. And then when you see him pass the ball, you say to yourself, that's a, that's that's a quarterback. quarterback. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it, so, so that, that terminology of dual threat is thrown around an awful lot. And when you see a lot of times when people say dual threat, what they really mean usually is that, oh, this guy's a really good runner, but his quarterback skills are shaky. Mm -hmm. That's what they mean by dual threat. And then you have a pro-style passer. Well, he's a really good passer, but that really sort of means is he's, he's a mobile. Right. Well, with De'Ara King, he is legitimately a dual threat, which is he's as good throwing the ball 
as he is uh, running the ball. Now, you might say he's a little bit more special as a runner from that quarterback position than as a thrower, but there's plenty to like about him as a quarterback also and, and with him throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. So and one of the things we, we talked about, it gives you an idea how athletic he is. He entered his freshman year at Houston as a wide receiver uh, because they had uh, a quarterback in place, and then injuries started uh, hitting the wide receiving core. Not only did he, as a true as a true freshman, did he play. He played in ten games, made four starts, got twenty nine receptions for two hundred twenty eight yards and a touchdown as a receiver. Uh, then twenty seventeen, he played quarterback and receiver as a sophomore, and he led a comeback win against South Florida, which is when he took over the starting quarterback for the final four games of that season. He completed that year 90 passes out of 139 attempts, 64.7 completion percentage, 1,260 yards, seven touchdowns, two interceptions. And, oh, by the way, he also had 379 yards rushing and eight touchdowns. And then, of course, in 2018 is the year that he sort of burst on the national scene and and just absolutely lit it up. Uh, But he did suffer a non-contact knee injury in the 11th game of the season, but on the season, he passed for 2,982 yards, 36 touchdowns with only six interceptions, and he also rushed for 14 touchdowns more. And only Kyler Murray and Dwayne Haskins accounted for more touchdowns than he did that year. And remember, he hurt himself in his 11th game. Right. So he, he, that, he was going to put uh, more numbers up if he hadn't got hurt. Um, and then you guys know what happened last year. He did play four games, but you could tell he wasn't anywhere near his old self. He did run in those four games. He rushed for 312 yards in those four four games. Right. But his, you could tell with the knee, the knee was still bothering him. Um, I don't. Ex- I think we're going to see the De'Ara King from 2018. I don't think we'll see the De'Ara King from 2019. I think he, another full year, fully removed from that injury is when you're truly back at 100%. Right. And a guy who's as, as athletic as he is, he, he almost has to be that. We saw that famously with the, with the Dolphins. You know, the, when the Dolphins picked Drew, uh, Dante Culpepper over Drew Brees, which everybody, of course, looks at it now and says, oh, that was the dumbest decision ever. Well, at the time, Drew Brees had a bad wing, mm-hmm. a bad throwing shoulder, right. which got severely hurt. Dante Culpepper had a bad knee because, right. you know, he had tore up his knee. Well, little did we know that that knee injury was going to end up being the end of his career because he was never the same player when he tried to come back. Right. Um, I think King sort of felt that way in 2019. And to his credit, you know, a lot of people don't like the fact that he shut it down. But listen, he wasn't 100%. So he shut it down and and was ready to come back, you know, doing what he could do. Yeah. and. And I think we already saw that he's back to to be the Derek King that he was physically in 2018. Right. I, I mean, you got to look at it from the, from the perspective of, of King and obviously his family. Um, your aspirations of having a, a bright future, you know, maybe making it to the NFL. And so if, if you're hurt, if you don't feel like yourself, man, the last thing you want to do is to make the injury worse, have a catastrophic, you know, a catastrophic, knee injury or any other injury you know you just don't feel like yourself so he's like you know what i'm gonna shut it down and i mean his plan was to go back to houston for his senior year you know but i mean there was there's a lot of people in houston you know teammates as well they were frustrated with his decision because it was it was his decision he's like listen i'm shutting it down you know it just wasn't a coach's decision this wasn't you know it was just so so some teammates felt that you know, that maybe he quit on the team or... And that is, I mean, that's legitimate. If, I mean, I, if, yeah, I'm, a, if, I, if I'm a teammate, I, I, I'm upset at it also. I, that, that, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. But, I mean, you got you to look at, at, at both sides of the coin, you know? So Absolutely. From, from his perspective, you know, when, when you're not right, you're not right, man. And the last thing you want is for something bad to happen because you don't feel... And even 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 if you're okay physically and you're not okay mentally... Like you're not trusting that knee or you're not trusting whatever injury it is that you have that could lead to you hurting yourself even more just because you're not okay up here. So you're like, you, you need to be in conjunction mentally 
and physically as a whole in order for you to play to your best ability. So he felt like he couldn't do that in, in, uh, in, um, in 2019, man. So he sat out, and now he's a Miami Hurricane. So hopefully we're going to reap from the benefits of him sitting out, getting healthy, getting stronger, and we're going to see that the year it came from, from 2018. And, and listen, again, you have to give credit where credit is due to Manny and the staff. And yep. Brett Lashley, obviously, who was the biggest guy in being able to get to Eric King. Right. But this is a guy who could, who could have gone to LSU, defending national champions, could have gone to Oklahoma, a couple Heisman Trophy winners yeah. <laughs> and, in Oklahoma in 2019, you know, I'm sorry, 2018 and 2017 that were transfer quarterbacks. Right. So this is a young man that could have walked on anywhere, mm-hmm. could have gone anywhere. I don't mean walk on like a walk on, but I mean he could have showed up at he campus yeah. any place and 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 started right and yet he chose the university of Miami. right so that that's an amazing he was by far the best quarterback out there you know mm-hmm. when people are looking at the way forest quarterback the king's at a whole different level than the other quarterbacks that were available mm-hmm. at an entirely different level which is why lsu wanted him which is why oklahoma wanted him and and fortunately for us he picked miami right and uh, i think i think it's going to be something truly special um, just want to finish up on the stats thus far in his college career, he's thrown for 4,925 yards, uh, 61.8, uh, I, I believe it, let me see if I, if I get it right. His completion yeah. percentage is 61.8, yeah. uh, 50 touchdowns, only 10 interceptions. He's rushed for 1,421 yards with 28 rushing touchdowns and receiving 59 catches for 504 yards and three touchdowns. But pretty sure we're not going to see him unless it's a trick play. I don't think we'll see him as a as a receiver at all. Yeah. But uh, special guy, let's get these clips. This is one of the things why uh, Juniors did a great job on this research and put some really good clips uh, of him as a passer. The first thing that when I when I thought that we were in the running for the Eric King, I started breaking down tape. I was expecting, because I had seen him play at Houston some, but, I mean, how many Houston games have I seen? Two right. or three at yeah. the most? Right. Uh, I, I saw the Oklahoma game, and I know he wasn't 100% in that one. So, But I expected to see a really gifted runner and an okay passer. Mm-hmm. That's not what we saw. Right. We saw a guy who's almost as gifted as a thrower as he is as a runner. Mm-hmm. And I think the, the, the video clips that you picked out will show that. Yeah. So let's go ahead and let's get to the video clips. Let's go here. I want to make sure I can open it up. Uh, the, give me one second here. I and sorry if you're rusty. Cause it's been a long time since, it, we've, since we've done a, 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 a player breakdown. So, I mean, you know, bear with us where, while we get yes. accustomed to, to doing what we used to do. All right. Let's go with, with uh, clip number one. And here we go. You're going to see. Now, now I want you to watch on this pass. He sees that the guy has a couple of yards on his defender, actually a little bit more. Make sure he gets it to him. He didn't try to over, you know, to lead him. He saw that he had room. You want to make sure you complete the pass when you have something like that. Now, watch how much air he puts under it. And again, watch how easily he throws this ball. That's a 40, about a 45-yard throw. Mm-hmm. and he's throwing it without even really winding up, gets rid of it quick, puts some air under it, and gets it there. Yeah. Uh, we're going to see something similar here on clip number two. What I like about this is the fact that he looks off the safety, and here's clip number two. And you're going to see, oh, something happened on my end here. Uh, okay, so bear with me. If you want, I'll take over on go. clip number two. So, yeah, on clip, on clip number two, you're going to see him look off the safety, man. Um, you're going to see this a lot with, with De'Ara King, which is what I, one of the, the aspects I like about, about his game, man. He doesn't, with his, his eyes, he doesn't lock on to his target. And he doesn't, I mean, he, he doesn't, from the snap of the ball, you see him survey the field really well. And this is something you're going to see and not just the clips that and we're going to show you. his progressions. Right, and he goes through his progression. So in this clip number two, you see him look to his left, look, look off that safety, and that gives him some room to go ahead and thread that pass perfectly in stride to his wide receiver for a long touchdown. And and, once, and, once again, and, there, there and you check, see the, the arm strength as well. And, and check the mechanics. The, yeah. Beautiful perfect. mechanics. 
beautiful mechanics. Yeah. And and like you said, he stays stands tall in the pocket, as tall as five eleven can be. Right. Exactly. Uh, and then you you see that the type of 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 throw that he makes there leads the guy beautifully in into touchdown for six. Yeah. All right. Now we're going clip number three. Yeah, I'm having a problem here, Junior, on my end. When I hit the clip, it, I'm not seeing anything, and then it starts off now. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Here go we ahead. Go. go ahead and yeah, do it now. Maybe I, I think maybe because we're both clicking on on the clip at the same time, so I, I'll just let you go ahead and, oh, click, on, and click on the clips. Yeah. Okay. Now I want you to see this throw. You might not notice on this throw. He's throwing it a legitimately about 50 yards. Drops it right there on the on the inside shoulder. There was absolutely no space between the receiver and the DB. The DB had good coverage, and yet King dropped it. Look at this. Puts perfect air under it, drops it right out of the sky, right into the inside shoulder. Beautiful catch. Beautiful throw. And, and, he, and he threw that 50 yards in the air, and he does that without even winding up. I don't think people talk about his arm strength anywhere near as much as they should. Right. All right, now let's go to, to click number four. Yeah, I think that was it, Junior. You, you and I were hitting at the same time because now it, it came on right, right away for me. Okay. Now I want you to watch the ball placement here. Throws right between the defenders. Perfect touch on the ball where the receiver can get it without breaking stride and take off. And what does it lead to? It leads to a touchdown. Again, beautiful ball placement. Look at that. That's exactly what you want to see from a uh, from a quarterback. Let's go to clip number five. Again, I want you to see the arm strength and the accuracy. He throws this ball over 50 yards. Okay, I want you to see that. He's throwing it for about 17. He throws the ball about 55 yards. But here's the important thing. Not only does he throw it that far, he puts an enormous amount of air under it, because, again, the receiver doesn't have much separation, and he drops it like it's dropped into a bucket. Beautiful throw. Look at that. 55 yards all the way to the sideline and with putting a lot of air. And if you see, he's not really winding up. It's not like he's, you know, airing it out or throwing it as far right. as he could throw it. There's still plenty. Of, he keeps his mechanics. Beautifully doesn't overstride. Gorgeous throw. And I want to, I want because I think there's been some doubts that people didn't realize what type of arm strength. Well, that's why has. that's why I wanted to put you know quite a few clips you know, where you see the arm strength and you see his talent as a passer. Absolutely, absolutely. Same thing here on the next clip, number six. And okay, again, he's throwing it from about his forty, all the way to the five. Again, a fifty-five yard throw. And again, look at the air that he's putting underneath the ball. This one he does bear back a little bit more, but puts perfect air in it. Doesn't have, he's not throwing it on the line. He's throwing it exactly the way you want him to throw it. Beautiful. Another touchdown. Let's go to clip number seven. As you see, he's, he's wanting to throw. But he's surveying the field. All of a sudden, it opens up. And then you see when he takes off running, he is special. Yeah. He is not like a good running quarterback special. He is like a really good running back special. Yeah. And, and not, see, not, not, not just that, up. but he's quick. Look too. that move. He's quick on, on, oh, his, on his, decision, quick on his decision making. Right. But on his Correct. decision making, you know, he see, he's surveying the field. He sees the, you know, there's nobody, nobody it open. Up. Boom. Gone. You know, and, up, and it's like a tw it's time. a twenty yard gain with like nothing, right? And Sparty he gets down. I mean, he obviously got down head first, but yeah, it doesn't take the big hit. Guys, when you see him running the ball, it's really really special. Yeah, let's go to this one. You're gonna see escape ability here. Look at this. Look at this. We have another angle on this. You can see exactly. <laughs> what he does in order to get away from this. Look at this. Beautiful. Guys all around him, takes off, and he's gone. Let's go to clip nine. 
Again, same thing. Look at this. Escapes. Yeah. Now, here's the big, big thing. He's throwing this ball basically about 30 yards. Yeah, because he's throwing it about 30 yards. Rolling to his left. But I want you to see the touch that he puts on this ball. Look at that. Drops it right into the receiver. Again. Look at that. Perfect. But first off, usually quarterbacks, right when they're running to the opposite way, their mechanics really get screwed up. And usually they have trouble putting finesse on the ball. They, 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 they can try to zoom it, try to, try to throw it hard. Right. But to put proper finesse when you're rolling to the opposite side like that is not easy to do. And, and he does it. It's tough, man. Beautiful. Yeah. And now our last clip. This last clip is special. That's why. That, that's why we, we we put it as the last the last clip. Yes, it was. It was. You guys got this is. Yeah, this is a running back. This is not a, a, a. He throws the ball like a good passing quarterback, and he runs the ball not like a good running quarterback, but like a good running back. Right. Exactly. I mean, this is not comparing him, but this is special in a way that's. Okay, I, I'll say at least LaShawn McCoyish. How's that? <laughs> so I don't want to compare him to somebody immortal. Right. But at least that type of escapability. Let's go to it. Here's clip number 10. Watch this, guys. This is a thing of beauty. Okay, he takes off. His, it was basically a design quarterback draw. Look at this. How does he get away from that? Then the spinorama. See ya. I want you to watch this again. I want you to see how many guys he gets away from. One, two, three. Then the nice, beautiful spin move, gone for six. I want to run this clip again so that way you get to see exactly how many guys. Look how many guys have a shot at them. A free rusher? No, misses, misses, misses twice. Look at that. That's basically what you're going to get with De'Ara King. Yeah. Is, is truly a guy who can throw the ball like a, a very, very good quarterback and can run the ball like a very, very good running back. Mm -hmm. And uh, and listen, we saw – I think everybody was surprised that the Cardinals picked Kyler Murray number one in the draft because he's five foot nine, whatever, he sings 5'10". 5'10". Yeah, <laughs> five, like 5'9 five, and three quarters. Right. Um, but the Eric King, listen, I'm not going to compare him again because they have different skill sets. Right. Kyler, Kyler Murray's further along as a passer than Eric is, mm -hmm. although Eric is a much better passer. Again, I think you sh we showed that in these clips. Yeah. But I think Eric is a lot more special as a runner right. than, than, uh, than Kyler. And, but, but, and, but, but listen, as, as well, Big Dog, I mean, you, when it comes to experience playing the quarterback position, I mean, Kyler has them True. On that as as well, you know. And, and Kyler was one of these that his dad was basically bringing him up to be a quarterback from the time he was born almost. Right, exactly. So, I mean, so, yeah. you, besides the experience, I would say, you know, Murray's probably a more fluid passer, a more natural, naturally gifted passer. But, you know, what, pe what people think, and, and it's, it's, it's great what you opened up with, Big Dog, like when people hear dual threat, it's almost like a – like a, it's a backhanded compliment. It, yeah, it is a backhanded compliment because the first thing that you might think about is, okay, this is this is a guy that could run, but he's not he's not like a really good passer. Like like that that that's that's some of the things that people think about when they hear those threat, and that's not the case with um you know Correct. with Derek with King. With know, frankly, because um, traditionally, I, and I'm not gonna I'm gonna point out somebody that, but because it was in the last recruiting cycle with Lance LeHendrick. Okay. You remember uh, Lance yes. LeHenry that, that yes, ended yes, up yes. with a whole – okay. He was dual threat. When you look at his tape, he's a really good runner, really good athlete, really raw as a quarterback. Pretty he raw. was not going – he need, he was a project as a quarterback. Right. Okay? Now, that's not the case with De'Ara King. He's what I call a true dual threat and, in that he does and, both very, very well. And, and Matocha was actually ranked lower. Absolutely. And, and when, when you – LeHendry. Than Lehendre, and, and when when you compare Matocha's tape to Lehendre's tape, you know obviously obviously Matocha had the whole thing with with Hurricane Harvey and and, and whatnot, right. so he wasn't 
I mean, maybe that took a hit a little bit, but it, it were, did. Were, it yeah, did. it did. It did. But people were, you know, when you compare both quarterbacks, a lot of people wanted Lehendre, but then when you look at the tape, you're like, oh no, wait a second, this dude, this dude Motocha has skills. That's why. That's why I keep on saying, man, you know, this may be no the Eric King's. This may be the King's year. You know, his final year. This year, correct. And don't get me wrong. I think it should be. I think he should be a starting quarterback. I think me and the big dog are both in agreement. I think he's ready. I think he's healthy. I think he he do some really special things for this program. But moving forward after that, it's going to be a completely open competition. Uh, Perry may have a leg up because of all the experience that he's built up throughout the years. But And then people are like, oh, no, Tyler Van Dyke. Don't don't count out Matocha. You know, so the thing is the competition in the quarterback room. We're seeing that. We're seeing the depth. You know, uh, King brings great leadership, which is something that this team has needed. And, you know, so, so I just think You're that, getting a, a competitive young man, right. solid citizen, true leader, really good runner, really good uh, thrower. Right. And you're getting all that in one package. In one package. Absolutely. With Derek King. Yeah. And, and the thing is, to your point, you remember when the whole thing with Matocha and Lahindre, because those were the ones that were available – uh, when when we were trying to get a quarterback, we're trying to get a, a quarterback, right, right. And and I, you remember Lehendry, I think was ranked like number six dual threat, and yes. Matocha was like down at number twenty three, yeah, yeah, somewhere was, around there. Yeah. And I sent you clips of both. Yeah. And I said, forget where they're ranked. Are they even close? And yeah. and you looked at it and went, they're not even close. Matocha was a much much better thrower of the football. I still, than yeah, I still remember that. I still remember that and, day. And athletically, Matocha. High jump, six foot nine. Yeah. Okay. In high school. So you're looking at a superb athlete also who was a very good thrower of the football. Now, if it wasn't for Hurricane Harvey, Matocha would have been at least a mid four star. Uh, Yeah, I think so. So you're right. They shouldn't sleep on him. But for right now, we have ourselves a superb, a top tier Heisman quality starting quarterback. And his name is De'Ara King. Absolutely. So... That's pretty much it for the D.R. King Breakdown, man. I hope you guys liked it, man. If you guys are new to the channel, please don't forget to subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you can notify anytime me and the big dog do upload a video. We go live every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you can join us, that'll be great. But um, hit this, hit the like button so you could uh, we could get this video shared and, and up in the algorithm. And bring your buddies along. Tell, tell people, hey, man, you guys, you guys see Tony the Big Dogs. They do the best breakdowns when it comes to the Miami Hurricanes on YouTube, man. So you guys already know we're back at it. We're back doing our breakdowns. We got a lot more coming. A lot more content is going to be coming out on a more regular basis. So be on the lookout for that. But hope you guys enjoyed the video. Anything, anything else you got to say, Big Dog? Uh, no, but by, by the way, a, a lot of people do great breakdowns too. Uh, so I, 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 we do want to throw oh, shade. I know, I know. <laughs> I, I, that wasn't any shade. Yeah, I know. Just, I mean, you got to be confident. You got to be Absolutely. confident, baby. Absolutely. You Absolutely. need a big dog when it comes to, the, to, to this recruiting and the player breakdowns. <laughs> Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the, and, and guys, support the other Hurricane YouTubers also. Absolutely, man. Uh, and we, we're blessed with your support. Thank you guys. And I hope you enjoyed this. And we have. Uh, Quincy Roche and um, Keyshawn Smith will be the next two that we do. And then after that, we have Dunson, uh, Dazzlin Worsham, and Jalen Harrell. Absolutely. So be on the lookout for those, man. Absolutely. As always. That's about it. It's all about this you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Have a good night.